was stirred within him because he saw the whole city was given over to idolatry. One of the things about in Athens at the time is that they were just so caught up with philosophy. They were just, of course, the Greeks being Greeks and, and philosophy was the biggest thing. Uh, the more, you know, you, you knew, the higher on the uh, social scale, you know, scale you were. And, and uh, one of the things they would love to do in a place called Mars Hill is they love to talk about religion and they love to talk about all the ideas and philosophies in the world. And they would have these discussions and these roundtables and, and, and crowds would gather. And uh, so as, as Paul was there, in Athens, he was walking, the Bible says, he was out taking a walk because he didn't have his bike with him, so he had to take a walk. So he was walking and he saw all of these uh, idols and these things, and one of the things he noticed that at the bottom of the one, it says, this is dedicated to the unknown God. And so he began, God began to stir him and give a message and started really working on his heart. He's like, okay, I think I know how to really communicate the gospel through this. And so he stood before him and he began to preach the gospel, and uh, so the leaders of this council that were over this whole council of philosophy and religion, they were like, hey, uh, what is this new religion you're talking about? What is this new message? We never heard anybody talk like this before, and so they said, listen, let, let's, let's, get, uh, let's have a little meeting. So they had a little meeting, and, you know, and they called Paul in, and he began to talk to them about the Lord, and he began to talk to them about the, the, the idol the, of the unknown God, and he began to describe who the unknown known God is. How many know, we know who the unknown God is, amen, the name of the unknown God, um, but he said, you don't know, and, and you don't know what you're worshiping, but I'm going to explain it to you, and I'm going to start breaking it down for you, and so in verse 26, he talked about how the, the, the God was the God of creation, and how that he sent Jesus, and, and the Bible says in verse 26, from one man, God made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and boundaries of their lands. Verse 27, this is key. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. In verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your po poets have said, we are his offspring. So he quotes from, I don't know who the poet was at the time, a philosopher, but he quotes from them. But he, he, he presented the gospel, and one of the things he said is that God did all these things so that men would seek God, so that we would have an encounter with God, so that God would reach us and we would reach out to God, and so that we would touch the Lord and He would touch us. One of the things I have prayed about, and as I'm, you know, we kind of like, you know, we talk about uh, what's been going on all over the country with uh, college campuses starting in Asbury University and things like that, and how there's prayer and testimony and worship, and then, of course, uh, the movie that we're going to be showing on Wednesday, uh, you know, just what God's been doing this last year or two, um, and, and I, I'm just kind of prayed about it, and I just see it real clear. I just see that one of the things God's doing is He's restoring our, our gatherings together since covid God is doing this thing where he's renewing the gathering of his people. He's like really firing us up over this, let's get together and let's have church. And I think that's really a blessing from the Lord. Come on. And I see that happening with all these gatherings, that they're having meetings every day, every night, and uh, all this prayer. And it's so good because for so long, so many people were uh, disconnected and we, uh, you know, where they were, whether they didn't have meetings or online services, whatever it was. And uh, in, in Europe, most of Europe, it was 18 months um, before they were allowed to meet again or even uh, gather anywhere. And so, um, you know, we, we see that. And so there's a renewing of a gatherings. And then the second thing I see is I see the church going public. <laughs> How many of this is God is restoring this thing in the book of Acts? How many know the church needs to go public? And I see the church going public like never before. I see, let's just, let's just take this out to the street. Let's just take this into the community. Let's just take the worship of Jesus, the glorification of our King. Let's just let everybody know about it, right? How many know that's going to happen, right? And we're going, to, we're going to keep doing that. And so one of the things that Jesus himself spent 80% of his ministry was out in public. Did you know that? 80% of his ministry was done in public. How many of the church is public? The church is in some secluded little cult ice, you know, uh, club that we kind of meet over here in the mountains and don't tell anybody you need a passcode to get in. No, we're public. We're right here. Amen? And so that's one of the things I see. And the third thing as I see is just the emphasis of God's love for the world. 
the emphasis of God's love for people and for, for the world. And so with that, there's miracles happening and there's salvations happening and, and there's so many wonderful things happening because it's this, this full expression, once again, this emphasis of God's love. When you talk about an awakening, you're talking about a, a, anything like that, a reformation, you're talking about what happens is, is that God begins to reemphasize something about his nature. God begins to reemphasize something with repentance or prayer or the reading of the word. In Nehemiah and Ezra's day, it was the reading of the word once again in public. Come on. It was that Israel was restored to the, the reading of God's word. And so you see this a lot happening uh, in, in the children of Israel when they came out of uh, uh, Egypt and there was a, the Exodus, you see that God was bringing them to a place of worship once again, right? So you see this and you see the Lord doing this and God's emphasizing this and re-emphasizing this in our day. And so I want to thank the Lord for that, amen? Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of negative, uh, I don't really like to entertain a lot of uh, negative uh, feedback from what God is doing in the earth, right? It's not really healthy, and uh, you know, to read the tabloids, you know. But you know, it's amazing how many Christians even are trying to overanalyze what the Lord is doing right now, or what's happening in our nation. They're trying to like figure it out and break it down, and and then they're like, well, they didn't do it this way, and they didn't do it this way, and they didn't do it this way, and, and it's just. It's just kind of amazing to me, and that uh, we have so many professional, professional podcasters today that feel, uh, many of you want me to give my breakdown of what God is doing, and I feel like we just need to kind of get away from that a little bit and just say, you know what, God, thank, thank you for what you're doing, you know? Thank you that people are, like, declaring Jesus once again, and that, like, people are out singing about God. I mean, I mean and they're, like, so worried and overanalyzing, well, they didn't do this, and they didn't preach this, and they didn't, they need to tell people they're sinners, they need to, come on, Right? Come on, don't overanalyze what God is doing. Let's just go with what the Lord is doing. And so I see that, and I feel bad for those people because they're just like, their brain is in a knot. And it's like they can't get, you know, you can't right, communicate right. But anyways, but I feel that one of the things that God is doing and has been doing for centuries is that he wants to bring us to a place and people, not just Christians, but everyone, to a place where we say God is real and he's changed my life. Amen. And so we're going we're gonna to look forward to doing uh, some things here at our church and outside meetings and so on and so forth that really people can have an encounter with the living God. How many know it's important to have an encounter with the living God? How many know God's all about that? God's all about you encountering His goodness, His presence. The Bible says that the goodness of God leads to repentance. He's all about people encountering Him, coming to a place where they're meeting Him face to face. They're engaging with God. They're connecting with the Lord. That's what it means to have an encounter with God. It means to meet with God. Have this meeting with the Lord. I don't know about you, but this generation needs to have a meeting with God. Amen. God wants to have a meeting with this generation. God wants to have an encounter with this generation. Amen. This present generation, young and old. God wasn't, uh, and there's all these complaints about the millennials and the Zoomers and all these things. In gen Listen, I, I'm going to tell you right now, God wants to break in on our culture and our world, and He wants people to encounter Him. Can you say amen? God wants this generation to encounter His love, His power, His grace. His goodness, His word in a fresh, fresh way. And we as a church can't sit back and say, well, God's going to do it or God's going to use somebody else. No, we need to say, Lord, here am I, send me. How, Lord, can I be used by the Lord for people to meet you? How can I be used by you, God, for people to have encounter with you? But you know, as Christians, if you're not having an encounter with God, I'm more than likely the people in your life aren't going to have an encounter with God. Amen. And so that's what Jesus was, his ministry was all about having an encounter with the Father so that he can go and minister and, and let people have an encounter with God. Amen. And I think that's where our heart needs to be today. I mean, let me just go over some things about uh, this encounter with the Lord and meeting with the Lord. You know, the way I see it in the scriptures, um, and this is too loud, you can turn it down. But the way I see it in the scriptures is when God has this encounter with people, look at the scriptures, God just shows up. How many have ever had those encounters with God? Like you were just kind of like minding your own business, whatever you were doing, and like God just walked in the room. Like he just, like you could sense his presence. Anybody? Right? I mean, just, just uh, last week, it was like I was listening to his worship song, and I don't even know, you know, really what it was or whatever, but it was just like I just felt God's presence. Like he just showed up. And I'm like, ooh, okay, he's here, right? It's like Jacob, when he had that revelation, like God's been here, and I didn't even know it. 
He just showed up. Like he just started showing me ladders and angels and right. God just showed up. How many have had that experience? Lord, you just like showed up. You came in the room. You did whatever. Filled the car wherever you were. Some of you got saved that way. You were just like minding your own business. You're like, I don't like Jesus people and I'm not into church. And all of a sudden he just showed up in your world. Paul the apostle was on his way to kill people and Jesus showed up. (laughs) How many know God can encounter anybody at any time the way he wants to and speak to them and deal with them the way he wants to? Amen. And we pray for that, don't we? We pray for God to just show up. How many have ever prayed that over somebody? You were like frustrated with your family members, maybe your kids. You're just like, you just got to show up. You just, they just need an encounter, God, because, because we know that when you meet Jesus face to face, like John on the Isle of Patmos, the Bible says he couldn't even stand on his feet. He fell as if he were dead. When Peter saw Jesus really for the first time in that boat, when Jesus showed himself and revealed himself, he said, Lord, get away from me. I'm a sinner. There was this encounter that he had. Is that right? And how many know the Lord moves that way? He just shows up and he just kind of like, you know, it's an unusual encounter. It's it's rare sometimes. And some of you are like, man, it's been years since I felt that. That's okay. It's unusual. It's supernatural. I mean, God does it. It's kind of like sovereign. He just kind of Right? He does it. He just kind of shows up and there's that supernatural experience. And there's this overwhelming sensation that God is here. Wow. And uh, I believe that we can encourage God and we can, we can do things that like worship just has a way to open our hearts up and we encounter God. I believe there's ways like that. But ultimately, it's just God showing up. And, you know, many people look for that and they seek after that as the only way to meet God. Like, I've got to feel something in order for me to encounter God. I've got, to, I've got to, you know, everybody else is experiencing God, but I don't feel anything. And they measure, uh, you know, God loving them and God moving in their life by these emotional encounters and these sensations, this overwhelming sensation, this, this supernatural experience. And, and that happens, doesn't it? It's unusual sometimes. And it just happens when God wants to. But what happens is, is that we become too dependent on that. It becomes a mysterious pursuit of God that depends on man. We have to create those encounters. We have to do this. And what do I have to do to get God, you know, to feel God? What do I have to do to get God's attention? What do I have to do? And those are supernatural. Those are special. Those are times when God moves in our heart, speaks to us, right? And he just shows up. He just shows up. And those are, that's just special. That's just special. And we just need to rejoice and praise God for that. But let me just say this. There's another type of encounter God when God shows up or God encounters us. Number two, it is when God is invited. There's just something about when God's invited. When you say, Lord, we're having a get together. And you're like, you're like the, on the A-list. You're like the host. You're invited. How many know God shows up? Right? And when you come to the Lord in prayer, guess what you're saying? You're saying, Lord, I'm going to schedule a meeting with you. (laughs) I'm going to schedule a meeting with you. And the Bible says that we don't have to wait. We can come boldly into the throne room. I love that picture of the Lord. His office is always open. Amen. That's right. That's what it is. And we just go in and we just said, Lord, I'm going to have a meeting with you. I'm going to talk with you right now. I'm going to encounter. How many know God comes where he's invited? The Lord comes when he's invited. And when you begin to worship God, that's your way of inviting God the Lord to come in, or wherever. Lord, just show up. How many have ever prayed that prayer over your kids? Lord, just show up. You prayed that over your neighbors. Just show up in their home. Just, just, Lord, I invite you. Lord, I invite you right now in my, in my home. I invite you into my marriage. I invite you into this car right now. I just invite you. Right, I want you to come right now. I want to talk to you right now. I want to have an encounter with you. Amen. Have not been there? And that's what we do. We have those encounters and God begins to do something amazing. I just want to go through this quickly. And, and, and God is invited. There's that meeting that we schedule. And, you know, you can be cleaning the house and you can be, uh, you know, uh, running through your business and your job. And yet the moment you begin to talk to the Lord, there's an invitation for an encounter. Lord, right here, I'm busy. I'm out in the woods. I'm, I'm doing whatever, hiking, whatever. And Lord, right now, I thank you, Lord, that I'm going to just invite you. I'm going to open up and begin to pray. I'm just going to invite you in. Amen, invite you here. So the Lord comes through that way. And we see that in the, in the Bible. And, you know, but unfortunately to, to a lot of people, just having an encounter with God is limited to just having good meetings. Just having a time in church, if I can just show up in church and we can sing the right song and we do the right thing, and then we had an encounter, I can leave and said, I know the Lord, I've met with the Lord, and I'm good to go. Amen. But how many know that's not good enough? 
When you walk with the Lord for a little bit and you have this relationship with the Lord and these, you, you just say to yourself, that's not good enough. I need the Lord more. I need more time with God. I need more time in His presence. Come on, somebody. I need His presence in my life just a little bit more than that. Amen. That's when you begin to get hungry for God and begin to want to desire God. When you open the word and you begin to, uh, wherever it is, whether it's on an app or whether it's in your home, you just open the word, you begin to read. This is an encounter with God. You're saying, Lord, I'm inviting you right now. I'm opening my heart up. I'm opening up the word right now. And I want to have an encounter with you in the word. And so I believe that happens. In the Bible, there's over 23 revivals or movements that was recorded, specifically recorded. One of them, of course, being the resurrection of Jesus. One of them being the Exodus. One of them being Josiah and what happened there. But there's 23 revivals that are in the, in the Bible. And there's recorded of movements and moves of God, as we would call revivals in the Bible. We would say that. Um, but all throughout, you can trace these. And I did a study on this one time that I went through these 23 movements and revivals. And I realized that there's three common uh, factors or uh, four common factors that happen in every single one of these movements. Number one, that you see that false prophets and priests and things that idol worship was put out and destroyed. You see that the temple of God was either rebuilt or restored. You see that the word of God and the reading and the preaching of the gospel or the word of God was restored. Amen. You see a couple of these things, don't you? But ultimately, here's what you see. You see God bringing people back to himself. You see people coming back to an encounter with God. You're seeing the Lord open the door and said, I want to have a meeting with you. I want to spend time with you. And so anything that's distracting you, if you get off course, if you disobey like the Israel, come on, the children of Israel. I mean, God ha- had so much patience with them, didn't he? Because he'd tell them something and they'd do the opposite of it. And God was like, really? Really? Manna? Really? I Oh, right. So, so we did that. And so one of the things that God does it. And so we see this happening. And one of the things that we see happening is uh, people running back to God or coming back to the Lord. You see repentance. This is that res- restoring, that renewing of our vows to the Lord. Our promise to God and His promise to us. A lot of times we say we need to get right with God. How many have ever been there, right? Many times, most of us, right? I need to get right with God. And there's this repentance that we feel. This is humility that when we get to God's presence or close to the Lord and start talking to Him, we realize, man, I need to change. Like something I need, right? Come on, have you ever felt that, right? I mean, you got close to the Lord and you said, Lord, I I just, uh, nobody comes to God arrogantly. Nobody comes to, you don't come to the Lord and approach God in a proud manner and say, I deserve to be here and you need to meet my need. I mean, that doesn't happen with the Lord, right? You don't do that. We fear the Lord. We love God so much that we don't do that. And then there's reaching the lost. There's this engaging in the mission of God. These 23 revivals we see. Um, Adam had this encounter with God where God came down and you know, talked with him in the cool of the day, Moses. And then the tabernacles, all the, all the things of the tabernacle, you read it in all of the, 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 the five books of Pentecost. There, the, You read those things uh, that God set up the tabernacle to meet with people, to talk with people, to have an encounter with people. That's what he said. All the smoke, the fire, the incense, the sacrifice was all about an encounter with God. How many have ever seen that in the scriptures? It's all about God meeting with people. How many of God still wants to meet with his people? But here's the good news. In the New Testament, it says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That what happened in the, in the book of, of, of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, all that was just a picture that all the stuff that happened in the tabernacle was about now it's you and your body inside of you. God wants to come and make his home with you so that you can meet with him, so that you can fellowship with the Lord, so that you can have these encounters with the Lord. Now, for some people, when they hear encounters, they think of people taking trips to heaven and, and barking like a dog and, and, and these meetings that get out of hand. But that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about this overwhelming sensationalism of, of just this, uh, as we heard about last week, as this, this uh, kind of this uh, almost this this religious form of God, but the actuality of God, the encounter of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go to real quick to look at one of the greatest examples, probably one of the greatest encounters. There were so many in the Bible, but one of the things uh, I just wanted to focus on today was really Moses at the burning bush. How many remember that story, right? Moses at the burning bush. And you can't help but read Exodus without thinking of like, uh, you know, the, the classic Charlton Heston movie. I, I just can't get away from that, right? That's like the movie plays in my mind. And so, you know, that, that's, you can picture that. But 
We see this in Exodus chapter 3 and 4, um, chapters 3 and 4, where Moses has this encounter with the Lord, and God has an encounter with Moses. Moses is tending sheep, and he sees the burning bush, um, and, and it kind of catches his attention. How many know when God wants to have an encounter with you, he'll catch your attention, right? So it gets his attention. That's usually what it means to have an encounter with God. God gets your attention, right? Amen. And not necessarily in a very, you know, like beating you over the head, but just like, wow, Lord, wow, that's awesome, right? How I many know? Come on. God gets your attention. And then Moses went to investigate. The Bible says that he saw this burning bush, and that was great. But then he went to investigate. He turned, he said to himself, let me turn aside and see this great sight. So he went to look for it. How many know it took a step of faith from him? It took a step towards what God was doing. It took a step of engagement from Moses. Come on, somebody. How many know you can't encounter the Lord without you taking a step towards God, right? And so we see this, and there was this response from him. And then God spoke out of the bush, the Bible says, and and then Moses responded. And you see that God, the first thing he says is, take off your sandals, you're on holy ground. Then we see the second thing he says, he begins to reveal himself. "I'm, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God of your father. Then he says, and then he begins to give a call. He was like, I hear this tremendous cry of slavery and bondage for the last 400 years. And it's coming up before me and it's moved my heart and it's time for deliverance. And he said, there's going to be a maze and a big revival in, a, in, in Egypt and you're the evangelist. And he gives him this call and he begins to move and, say, and he shows him what he's going to say and what he's going to do. And he gets this purpose from the Lord. How many know when God in, encountered the Lord, he gives you a purpose? He speaks to you His will. I love that about the Lord. He showed him the need and He gave him His purpose. And then He revealed His name. He said, this is what you're going to say. And, and, and it was like the gospel almost, like the message from the Lord. This is it. Revealed His name. And then He gave him some signs and wonders that, first of all, that Moses would believe. He gave him a couple things. He said, uh, you know, for, for, for Moses to be convinced that this is God, that this is going to happen and that, that you're man, God's man and this is really going to happen. And so God gave him some things. But also he said so that Pharaoh would believe, so that the world would see it and so they would wonder and they would believe. And I'm going to use these things, he said, three things. I'm going to use these things and I'm going to use it for my glory. But this is going to be key to Pharaoh releasing people out of bondage. And there was this manifestation of the power of God. How many have seen that in that scripture? Uh, There was a manifestation of the power of God in Moses' life. It was like, wow, God showed himself in such a real way, in such an amazing way. But if you take that that encounter into consideration and we look at the way the Lord wants to encounter us today and have this encounter with us today, I just want to just make it real clear, just a few things. Number one, God reveals himself. When God brings to a place or brings you a, a, a place of attention, the, he kind of like kind of wakes you up in an area or maybe you feel like, you know what, I really haven't been praying or reading my Bible. And, and then all of a sudden you get in worship and you just feel this like overwhelming of God's presence and you're just fired up and you're refreshed and you just have the way. God reveals himself to you. How many know God wants to reveal himself to you all the time? Anybody? People are like, well, I got saved 60 years ago. I have a picture of Jesus on my wall. It's good for me. No, he wants to reveal himself to you. I don't know about you. Are you praying for your neighbors? Are you praying for your family, your kids? God, reveal yourself to them. I mean, I can tell them about you. I can show them good examples. I can take food over to their house. I can mow their lawn. I can do a lot of good things. But Lord, ultimately, you've got to show yourself to them. How many are here? Here today. You're here today because you saw Jesus. You, you found Jesus. He's like the answer. He's not just the answer, but he is the answer. Like, like he showed himself to you. Like he showed himself all his goodness, all his mercy to you. You didn't deserve it. And yet here he is showing you as this merciful, loving God. Some of you are here because God just showed himself as beautiful and wonderful and extravagant and creator. And you're like, wow, God showed himself to me. Right? So God reveals himself. God reveals his ways and his acts. The Bible says that under the old covenant, the way that God worked was God would show his ways to Moses. And then God would show his acts to the children of Israel. But how many know under the new covenant, God both shows his ways to you and his acts. God reveals himself fully to you in the, under the new covenant. When you get born again and get, uh, have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he reveals Jesus to you. Amen. How many know that it's, it's important to connect to God because then you know who God is. So I want to tell you that. The second thing I see is there's this interaction with God. You can't really have an encounter with God without an interaction with God. 
Many people believe, and I believe it too, that and when it comes to the scriptures, the written scriptures, that there, that there is that closed canon. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. Come on, right? How many believe that about the Word of God? We don't redefine the Bible today or rewrite the pages. We don't do that. But how many believe with all your heart God's speaking today? That God is speaking today. That God does speak today. And there's this interaction with the Lord that when you encounter, have this encounter with God, it's about God touching you and you touching God. There's an interaction. Isn't that great? How many know that's about a good, healthy, intimate relationship is about interaction? Is that right? Right? And so you reach out to God, He reaches out to you. You speak to God, He speaks to you. Right? Come on. How many believe that it's important to listen to God? But how many know God listens to you? And there's that interaction of relationship and intimacy that's built because we have this interaction with God. Some of you feel that I don't have this close relationship with God simply because you haven't been talking to God a lot. So I haven't heard the Lord uh, and God hasn't been speaking to me. Maybe because your Bible is closed. Maybe because your heart's a little closed to His voice. Maybe you don't recognize it like you used to. He's still speaking. He's still working. You're just, maybe you've just kind of moved to another level. You're just not listening like you used to. But how many know there's this interaction with God? God does that. He reaches out to you. You reach out to Him. And, and let me just say this. This is how I know this is how God works and has these encounters with us. Because if you put this in the context of marriage, in order to have a good, healthy marriage, there has to be healthy interaction. It's not one person speaking all the time. Now, maybe you feel that way in your house, but, right? A good, healthy relationship is people interacting. How many know you can't have an intimate relationship, an intimate marriage, intimacy in marriage without interaction between each other, right? It's not just one person, one way. One, come on, it's just not that way. It has to be both people. Well, that's the same with the Lord. He speaks, you speak. You listen, He listens. Come on, somebody, amen. That He touches, you touch. And it's that interaction. And some of us, we miss that with the Lord. We miss that with prayer. Have you ever just, you know, again, there's times that we go through the list and we feel like, yeah, I mean, I just made my petitions known. And there's other times, have you ever just gone in prayer and just sat in a chair and said, Lord, I'm waiting for you to speak to me? Have you ever done that? Or maybe you just were praying about something for weeks on end or months on end and just saying, Lord, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting for you to speak. I'm waiting for you to move. How many know that's interactive, right? There's interactive. So we, we, okay, that's clear. We get that. And the third thing I see is that God, we talked about it before, God speaks to you. One of the things I found out about how God speaks to you, number one, he encourages you. How many believe God, when God comes to you, how many of you just felt that maybe this morning, God encouraging you? Uh-oh, two people. Wow. God encourages you. I love you. It's going to be all right. I got you. This is good, right? How many have ever felt the encouragement of the Lord? A couple people. That's good. Amen. Okay, we're getting there. I mean, I've got, and, and God has in a ways of encouraging us. When you pray and you come to the Lord, some of you may not feel like, I didn't do good this week. I haven't talked to you for a while. I mean, my Bible's got some dust on it. I, okay. But how many know the Lord says, it's going to be okay. I've been here with you. I love you with an everlasting love. I've never stopped loving you. My, my goodness is here today. My mercy is here today. How many of you ever feel the encouragement of the Lord when you talk to him? When God talks to me, it, you know, we, we, we look at that picture of God being this like drill sergeant. Yes, sir, I report for duty. But there's times where God just says, you know what? It's cool. I love you today. And you're just like, oh, okay. I get it, right? And so God encourages you. This is God revealing his heart to you. And if you're in prayer and you've been a Christian and maybe you've just been so caught up in religion, you, don't, you can't hear God express His heart to you, I would encourage you to get to a place where you come back to a place where you hear God express His heart to you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. We all need that, don't we? We need that encouragement from the Lord. We need that. We look for that for other people. We look for that affirmation for other people. Look to the Lord first for that affirmation. Look to the Lord first. The Lord says, I love you with an everlasting... Jeremiah had this long grocery list. I mean, all the needs going on. The people of God were, man, they were doing this. And man, I'm getting ready to prophesy fire. And God showed up to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, I love you with an everlasting love. Yeah, I like, okay, yeah, but I got to talk to you about Israel. No, I love you with an everlasting love. I never stop loving you. And all of a sudden, Jeremiah's prayers got a little different. Amen. And so there's that God speaking to us. Number one, encouragement. Number two, there's the instruction from the Lord. When you have an encounter with God, I wouldn't tell you right now, God's going to give you some instruction. Amen? Come on, it's not just like, ooh, I feel good, goose pump, I'm going to run around the church. No, God speaks to you. All through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, we see that when God encounters us, 
Humanity, he comes with instruction. He wants to tell you something. Come on, somebody. Amen. God's got instruction for you. How many of you believe God's got assignment for you? God's got a purpose for you. I don't, I don't care how old you are. If you're a teenager, God's got an assignment for you. God speaks to you. He's going to come in instruction with, uh, to your heart. Amen. Lord, what should I do? How should I react? What should I be thinking right now? What's the choice I need to be making right now? God's going to give you that instruction. Encounter with God comes with instructions, right? Come on. All through the Old Testament, every time Moses got with God, he was like, I'm going to pull my hair out with these people. I wish you would just strike them dead. I'm ready to move on, right? And God would say, no, this is what I want you to tell them. Tell them this. Tell them this. Tell them this. That's what the Ten Commandments were all about. God giving him instruction for the people of God. Amen? Right? So God wants to give you instruction. And so this is God revealing his word to you. When God gives you instruction, he usually does it through his word. How many ever just said, Lord, I need an answer, and had just opened up the Bible? How many have done that? That's what we need to do. Lord, I just need an answer right here. I need to see it in your word. Some people are like, I need an answer. That doesn't make sense. I need another answer. I don't know who that is. Okay, right? But that's not how it works. It's as you are walking in the word, as your fellowship with the Lord in his word, there's something all of a sudden it clicks, and you say, I got it. That's what, that's what I need to do. That's, that's the right way to think right there. That's what I need to do right there. And so God gives you instruction. And I want to just throw this out. Be, please be aware of teachings. Be aware of music or ministries that rely on or magnify the emotional experience to encounter God rather than the Word of God. Amen? How many know when we encounter God, there's tons of emotions going? I mean, it feels good. And a lot of times, right? Sometimes you're like, ooh, you got to get away from me, Lord. I haven't been good, right? But does, most of the time, it's through his word. But don't, so many times we, there's so many ministries that put an emphasis on, and I've heard him even preach this, that to encounter God, you got to do it through emotional experience, but they, and they even say over the word of God. And I, I want to throw a caution out there, don't do that. But how many know God's going to speak to you? And when you encounter God, he's going to give you instruction, let's move on. And the third thing is, is that God's going to commission you. There is a purpose of God. There is a will of God for your life in eternity. There's an eternal purpose that you have. How many believe that? How many have got a hold of that? Like, man, like Josiah, like, man, I'm tearing it up with this purpose. Like, I'm going for God. I know what God's called me to do. I want the Lord to use me that way. But then there's also, there's these short-term things that the Lord wants you to do. Almost daily, God has instruction for you. God has a purpose for you. God has assignments for you. And that's what's so neat about walking with the Lord and listening to the Holy Spirit in your life because you could be in the store minding your own business and the next thing you know, the Lord just says, pray for that person. How many know that's an assignment from the Lord? That's a commissioning. When you have an encounter with God, it's not just going to make you feel better about yourself and, oh, have these good, great meetings. No, what was going to happen is I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to love on you. You're going to feel my presence, but I'm going to give you a commission. I've got some things for you to do. How many know the Lord's all about work too, right? He's all about worship, but he's about work. And so we know that. And, so, um, and, and one of the things I love about how God speaks to us is that he speaks to us today. And I believe this with all my heart. If God did not speak, he would be a God of stone. But how many believe with all your heart we serve the true and living God? And because he's a living God, he speaks. How are you going to be a living person and not speak? You can't do it. You speak. Jesus even said the Holy Spirit, he's, not, he's going to speak to you. Right? So God speaks to us and God speaks to us today. Many people believe that God was done speaking when the uh, disciples passed away and that it was closed canon. God was done speaking. There's no more prophecy. There's no more words from the Lord. There's no more, you just kind of talk to God. It's a one way conversation and that's how prayer goes. But how many know that's not the way prayer goes? Right? That's not an encounter with God. God will speak to you. And the last thing I want to share with you is that when you have this God encounter, encounter with God, is that God gives you hope. When you, when you just meet with the Lord, even in prayer, and you just say, Lord, I just need to be with you today. I just need to, how many have ever been in that situation? You say, I just need to be with the Lord right now. I need to turn off my device. I need to shut everything down. I need to take some time. And I just need to, and there's something about that. I'm not, and I'm saying that it's going to always feel the best, but there's going to be hope. When you encounter the Lord, he gives you hope. One of the things I love about this encounter with God and Moses this interaction that God had with Moses is the theme that God had to drill into Moses' heart and in his mind is, I'm going to be with you. 
I know you stutter. I know that. I made your mouth. Come on. I'm the one that created you. Moses, I've been with you your whole life. I know you're not the best speaker. And I know you got some leadership things going on. You got some daddy issues going on. I get it. But I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, come on. How many believe that? Lord, I'm with you. And he gives you hope. The promise of His presence. I'm going to be with you today. And some of it, if you feel kind of guilty because, oh, it's like I haven't really prayed. I have done this and everything. But, you know, I want you to know that God gives you hope in His presence. It's okay. It's okay. Don't compare yourself to other people. You go at the rate you're going. Go to the speed you're going. I'm working in your life. I'm, I'm doing some things in your life. Come on, somebody. Right? I believe that God gives you hope. Let me just throw this out. Not only does hope come from the Lord, but there's something when I get with the Lord, there's a confidence that I get in God's presence. How many know that when you encounter God, you get confidence? I'm not talking about pride. I'm not talking like, I don't need anybody. No, you start getting like, wow, I can do this. I can do this. Amen. When you encounter the Lord and you look at your situation, you say, honey, we can do this. It's going to be okay. We're going to get through this in Jesus' name. I've got hope. Come on, somebody. Amen. And when you're encounter the Lord, some of you just need to, when you just say, Lord, I just, I just need the hope that you're with me, but you're going to get, through, get us through this. And there's this hope that comes and there's this boldness that comes and the urgency sometimes that I can do this or I'm going to do this or I need to do this. I can do this in Jesus' name. But the last thing I just want to throw out about how God gives you hope. There's something that happens and we cannot overlook it. Even though we know that we do not live by our feelings, we not depend on those and trust those all the time, but let me just say this real plain. You get the feeling of God's presence and you can't deny it. <laughs> There's something amazing about feeling God's presence. A couple Christians, we're catching on. There's something amazing about being in a worship service and when all of a sudden you feel really, really good. How many have ever felt... How many have ever cried in God's presence, but you feel real good? How many have had sorrow in your life, but there's something that you feel peace? That you, you feel like, I'm so upset right now, I'm frustrated. And then all of a sudden, it's like, Lord, I'm sorry. I give this to you. I surrender. And you feel the joy of the Lord. Come on. I mean, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like feeling the anointing. I've been in those services where I get goose pimples like this, and I, the hair on the back of my neck stands up, and it's like, I mean, I'm calling people out, and they're falling, doing this, and all this stuff's happening. I'm, I feel the glory of God. How many have ever did that? Come on, that's what you get when you've got God's presence. And some of you have been like, Lord, I've been so thirsty. I haven't felt you close to me. When you begin to worship the Lord, you begin to feel His presence. Amen? How I many, again, you put this in the context of marriage. How many of you said, we love each other, but we never feel love? Oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, part of intimacy is like the feeling of intimacy. Right? That when you look at each other, eye to eye, and, you, you know, and, and the moon's catching their eye and whatever, I don't know, stars, it's whatever it is, okay, however your experience was, whatever, that first time when you were dating and whatever, and your husband or your wife, you were there, and all of a sudden, and I don't care, like, who you really are, you felt that romance, man. You felt that, it's like, this is going to be amazing, right? Anybody? Because that's intimacy, that's relationship, and when you look in somebody's eyes and you look and, and with, with that passion of love and, you, and your marriage partner and say, there's, there's a feeling there, isn't there? Okay, we can be honest. Let's just get real, right? So guess what? When you look in the face of Jesus, the one who loves you, the one who provides for you, the one who is your Lord and your Savior, guess what? There's emotion there. There's passion there. There's intimacy there. There's like, man, he loves me like nobody else loves me and I'm fired up over this thing. Amen? And some of you are just kind of going through the motions of religion and going through, and you just don't feel the Lord, but I want to encourage you, press in to God. Press in, because there is this feeling that when you're in His presence, you can be going through darkness, and you feel peace. You can be going through a tremendously terrible situation, and you feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate from that from your relationship with God. Come on, somebody. And some of you just need to spend time with the Lord. And Lord, I just feel you in the room right now. I just thank you, Lord, that Lord, I, man, I just, I, I, I thank you, Lord, for that. And put on worship music. Why? Because we feel those things. We feel God's presence. That's part of being intimate with the Lord. Anybody? Amen. Can we just stand on our feet today and thank the Lord for 
an encounter with the Lord today. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to... I know you're busy. I know some of you are like, man, I just... I'm so busy in life. I'm just... Life's going crazy. I haven't done this. haven't done that. I, I know how we feel. I know how we get it. I get it. You know, we, we get to the place where I just, I just haven't prayed like I should have. I haven't prayed like that for a long time and, and reading my Bible and I'm not getting stuff out of it like I used to or I'm not passionate about winning the loss like I used to. And I think what's important is in order really to kind of encounter the Lord and say the Lord is real is it's just that God needs to see your faith. That's all. God sees faith. Whether you spend five minutes with the Lord, whether you spend five hours, God sees your faith. Whether you're chasing kids around and making food and can't keep up with the laundry, God sees your faith. Hello, I said God sees your faith. God sees, Lord, I love you. I have never stopped loving you. I'm, I'm just, I'm busy right now. I'm just like I'm in a time. And I, I, so there is that time when you just have to say, Lord, you see my faith, right? But here's what the Lord needs. He needs our availability. You just make yourself available to him. Lord, I've got a busy schedule this week. I've got meetings. I've got this. I've got that. But I just make myself available to you. I just make myself, I'm just willing. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just available to you, Lord. If you want to speak to me this week, that's great. Awesome. If you want to visit me, I mean, that's great. Lord, I just, I just make myself available to you. Amen. How many of that's important? That counts. That counts before the Lord. And so today, I want to encourage you about having this encounter with the Lord. You know, when you worship and, and when you pray, that's an encounter with the Lord. Many think, oh, i got to have this big meeting. I've got to have the revival, this and that. And, and we've got to hear this. No, when you, any time that you, and that's not with music. When you worship God, that's an encounter with God. Anytime you just say, Lord, I just thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your miracles in my life. I just worship you because you're God. You're so good. You saved me. I love you so much. How many know that's an encounter with God? That's having an encounter with God. That's being in his presence. Amen. When you just say, Lord, I just pray for my family today. I pray you would bless them. Lord, I pray you would just overwhelm them with your blessing and keep them safe. How many know that's an encounter with God? That's an encounter with the Lord. So let's keep having them. Let's keep going after the Lord. Let's keep following hard after the Lord. And understand it's not once or twice or three times a year that we go to Jerusalem. Make these. It's every day we can have an encounter with the Lord. Every day we fellowship with the Lord. Every day. Amen. God speaks to us. We speak to Him. He touches us. We touch Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank You today. Thank you today, Lord, for your power. Thank you so much, Lord, for the way that you love us and speak to us, Lord. Thank you that, Lord, it's, it's not based on what I've done, but it's based on what you've done and your love for me, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that, Lord, this, this week, as I really kind of just move towards this next week, I want to take some time and I want to make sure that I honor you. I honor you in my day. I honor you with my time. I honor you, Lord. I praise you that I worship you some form or fashion, Lord, that I give you that time and space to move in my life and speak to me, Lord. I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that you're moving and, and, and the encounters that Jesus had with the Father only led him to have encounters with people. So open up doors that I can have encounters with people and lead them to, to that, that place of, 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 of really looking to the Lord and, and talking about the Lord. And that's my heart this week, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for, Lord, how you're moving in our lives, how you're moving in our church, how you're moving in the city. And I thank you, Lord, that you want to meet with people in this city. You want to meet, Lord, people. And we just thank you, Lord. You're going to touch this generation. You're going to touch people in this city, Lord. You're going to touch people because it's your love. It's your will, Lord. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. We're going to worship the Lord. What's up, fam? This is Michael. Thank you for joining us. If you love what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, then the bell notification with all the notifications on so that you can be informed on every time we post new content. The Lord's placed it on your heart to give. You'll find that link down in the description below. Don't forget to follow us on all of our other social media platforms so that you can be up to date on everything we're doing here at River Valley Church. Most of all, if you need someone to stand with you in prayer, click the link to our website. You'll find contact information. We want to get you in contact with prayer warriors who are going to stand with you in your time of need. Thank you for joining us today. We love you, we appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. God bless.